earlier we got such a loud gunshot pop out of the exhaust. I don't know if we could do that again. <laughs> There's a cop like three cars. Back. Is there? Okay. Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. We are out here in the beautiful canyon roads outside of Malibu, California, driving every Bentley speed that they have to offer. So we've got flying spurs, we've got Bentegas, we've got Continental GT coupes, and the convertibles down here. For those of you who haven't heard, it is sad because next year the W12 motor will be no longer. Bentley has produced over 100,000 of these hand-built wonderful methods of propelling a vehicle and they are coming to an end. So today they invited us out to drive every single one that they have as well as see one of the final send-off models of which they're only building 120 of each edition. We're filming a little bit out of order. We've actually already driven the cars, but I'm gonna give you a little walk around on each one that we drove, talk about it a little bit, and then we'll get to the driving of each. We're starting the day off in this remarkably bright gold Bentega Speed. We got to drive it through some of the slower parts coming out of Santa Monica, and it was a whole lot of fun. We see the dark accents of the Speed model, and between the loud exhaust and the loud color, this really creates a great example of what you can do with a large vehicle and an engine like this. All right, we are out in the Ventega Speed. Starting off the day, we've got an ostentatious uh, patino is the name of the color, right? Essentially gold, gold paint going on here. We've got a bunch of construction. I'm here with Max Maddox from Donut Media, and we are being a little bit of a menace. To, uh, to downtown Santa Monica and having quite a good time with it. We're just being rich, you know? Yeah, we That's are. That's what it's all about today. We're flexing on Q7s, or what, what was that Audi we saw? Was that an e-tron? I don't even know. Whatever care. it was, it doesn't matter because we are in a Bentega speed. And enjoying the sounds of this very high-pitched W12. It's, it's that, that the kind of two VR6s together really creates a unique sound that you don't get in anything outside of a Bentley. And obviously today we're getting the experience to taste every flavor of the Bentley W12 Rainbow. This still drives like a remarkably comfortable, large luxury crossover though. We are technically in sport mode. I'm driving around in manual, but even then you push the throttle down and the whole thing sort of bucks backward and even on these 22 inch wheels, riding pretty smooth through here. It's, uh, it's still a nice place to be. I'm liking the dark interior on this car. It makes for a really kind of stealth feel on the inside, but the total opposite on the outside. We couldn't even leave the parking lot. Yeah. People, <laughs> people were like, what's the name of that color? Which is kind of awesome. Little paddle shifters back here. I'm kind of glad that we're getting the Bentega out of the way in the city because we are gonna get some remarkably fun driving roads, some of the best of the best later on today. And that's when we'll be in the Continental. We'll have the Flying Spur up there as well. So kind of fun to just cruise around and live the Bentley lifestyle here. We're gonna go up Sunset Boulevard. We're gonna go, are we going through downtown LA or are we heading a little bit north we're of We're avoiding it and we're okay. taking uh, basically Sunset all the way straight to the Griffith Observatory right now. All right. We're bypassing the freeways, which are technically a little bit faster, but not by much. Sure, but on the freeway, we wouldn't be able to come to a stop and do things like this every time. That's right. I feel like also, you know, getting the SUV out of the way, this is the vehicle you're gonna want in Beverly Hills, where yes. we're gonna be driving through. We're gonna be 100%. Going, you know, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills. This is the Flexmobile. This is exactly what we want to do at this stage. But later on, we're gonna want that drop top coupe. We're gonna want that drop top coupe when we're driving through the canyons and whatnot. Totally. And, um, we're going our tans, you know. I heard, <laughs> I heard we might get our shirts off so that we can get tan while we're driving and uh, flex even more on the haters. Yeah. This might be one of the few cars that actually still turns some heads in Beverly Hills with this color on it and this noise. We, uh, we might get some attention. So I am about it. Still plenty quick too. Making our way through West Hollywood here, definitely getting a little bit of attention. Not exactly getting up toward our 190 mile per hour top speed, 626 horsepower out of this W12 motor. Not much of it being utilized, but at least we get the good sound. This thing is big, 5,300 pounds. Definitely a porker with all of that 
engine up front and all of this luxury behind, things like Alcantara steering wheel, the name sound system, bunch of luxury in here. Certainly adds up to the weight figure, but haven't minded at all. It's just kept us nice, cool. We got the massage seats going and we've had the windows down while we were not filming. And uh, let's see if we can open it up a little bit here. Earlier we got such a loud gunshot pop out of the exhaust. I don't know if we could do that again. <laughs> There's a cop like three cars. Back. Is there? Okay. Yeah, I think you're good. This is par for the course around here. <laughs> We're in the right place for the bright gold Bentega speed, that's for sure. So let's head on up to Griffith Observatory and switch in to our second Bentley. Let's Next up, we're into the Flying Spur Speed. It's gonna show up a lot better in the sunlight, so I'll be sure to get some footage to drop in here. But this is actually racing green, and it looks just fantastic. This was the wafty, smooth driving car that we got for the highway section of our drive today, but still plenty powerful, plenty fast, and plenty luxurious. Car number two is the Flying Spur Speed. We are just now coming off of some pretty generic highway driving. You really haven't missed too much yet. But that is what kind of makes the Flying Spur excellent, is being able to be in such a wafty, calm situation. Although, admittedly, I cannot figure out how to get the fan to be quieter. You'd think at fan speed one in a car like this, it would it'd be a little more silent. But we're getting off here and we're gonna get just a little bit of canyon driving, getting down to Panga Canyon and it should really allow us to flex this rear wheel steering, and of course, the theme of the day, the W12 engine. Same horsepower figures in this as we saw in the Bentega that we just got out of, that 626, and a whole lot of torque. Similar weight as well, pushing just over 5,600 pounds, so this is a big vehicle, but all that torque and the way it comes on really helps this car feel lighter on its feet than you would think Oh, okay, Prius, that's cool. Just go ahead and head out of the lane you were using. You the Prius. Yeah, I guess so. The car does feel a little bit more nimble than you might think, but with this really long wheelbase, it's settling itself in and just makes for such a comfortable, wafty driving experience when in comfort mode. But as we get going, we're going to put it into sport, and again, see if we can get some of those pops and burbles, a little bit of that character out of this engine. And There's one thing you didn't mention about this car, though. Okay. It is very green. It is remarkably green. Green. Racing green. It looks fantastic. It's very strange. I don't think it's one you'd necessarily see dealer ordered, but if somebody did spec the car out like this, I would be, uh, I'd be very happy with that. Another fun thing with the Flying Spur is this. Whoa. And then if you press that, you get your screen back. And then you press it one more time and you get very classy gauges. What do we have? Uh, I see a compass, I see an outside air temperature, and what is that over there? Clocks, a stopwatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see you at your zero to 60 time the <laughs> manual way. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Definitely liking the interior of this car. Uh, Max and I were talking about how it feels more Bentley, it feels more bespoke, it feels more special than the Bentayga. The Bentayga was very functional, and it was comfortable, and it, was, and it works well, but this feels more like a unique car, and, and, and a lot of the accents in here, and the way the screen is nicely built into the dash, everything feels like, ooh, I'm in something special, I'm in something unique. And the, the Bentayga doesn't quite have that same cachet to it. Will we be able to weave our way through and catch a little bit of canyon driving? The Scion actually might be giving us a little bit of an opportunity. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Did not realize that happened. So uh, yeah, I think, um, I think we might just be cruising in luxury mode here, Max. I think we're gonna have to save the exciting driving for the Conti Coupe that we're getting into after this, which I'm okay with. I mean, that's life, you know? I'm sure this flying spur hustles. Let's at least see if we can get a few good shifts here. Ooh, 
very guttural sound out of this bad. one. Maybe a little longer of an exhaust. That's yeah, doing. not as loud as the Bentayga. They're not piping it in as much, that's for sure. Yeah, no, this, this sounds genuine. Also, this wheel is leather, whereas the Bentegas was Alcantara wrapped. How do you feel about that? Well, I had a heated steering wheel on on accident, so my <laughs> uh, my experience with this one isn't maybe as objective as yours. Sure, that's fair. It's 97 marred. degrees out, so yeah. it's a great deal. Oh, we're down to 95, if that makes you feel better. I can give a little bit of lead time here. We can whip this one 20, uh, 20 mile per hour corner. Okay, <laughs> it does it. We did it. On to the Continental. Then for our trip down the canyons and onto PCH, Pacific Coast Highway, we had this Continental GT Coupe. This was perfect. I really like the spec between this barely standard gray exterior, but then coming inside looking at this beautiful black and red it really set the car off well, the carbon fiber bits. I was all about it. We are rolling in a very sexy spec of the Continental Speed. Continental GT convertible speed, actually. And we are going to go straight into proper mode here. Sport, paddle shifted down. Yeah. More horsepower with this one and less weight, of course, as well. This is where the W12 began in the Continental. This is what it was designed for. And Max pointed out something earlier. He said, you know, I never, I, I always thought of the W12 as something like a, a big, heavy chunk of iron in front of the car. But no, the whole point of the W12, the reason Bentley designed it, took those two VR6s and combined them, was to make a shorter motor. This car's engine doesn't take up all that much more space than some of the larger V8s either, but yet you're getting so much more displacement out of it. So between the unique sound and character of the engine and then the raw power, especially when you've got twin scroll turbochargers blowing extra air into here, I mean, it really makes for a unique experience. And of course, when you do option up to the speed models, you're getting the best of the best that Bentley has to provide in terms of suspension, tuning, rear wheel steering, all of it is put into these speed models. And man, I am so happy that we are getting this out on some canyon roads to experience this car properly. Because while the Flying Spur and the Bottega are cool, the Continental is the one that really carries that speed badge. And Max has actually pulled long straw and we'll get to drive top down up PCH with this thing. We're gonna let it really sing the song of its people. Maybe I'll do a little bit of filming from the passenger seat, but sure. we've caught back up with some pedestrian cars. Let's see if maybe we can walk them a little bit, get a few more fun corners. Here's another 25 mile per hour. a lower red line that you might expect, this being a larger engine. But the crip is certainly there, and the boost, the boost is there as well. You know it's interesting? When you're going into the turns, the seat belts are contracting. Ah, they're tensioning you back. They're yeah, telling you, oh no, senses. we're about to have an accident. But we didn't, because this thing, wrapped in some great rubber, some great engineering behind it, I like the small steering wheel as well. The diameter itself of the wheel is actually pretty tight. And it makes this car not feel like as much of a boat as you might think it is looking at it from the outside. I mean, this thing feels decently nimble. The red interior accents are really getting me as well. You've got red cross stitching in this one, red leather points, and right here on the shifter, some red leather as well. We've got a gray exterior to look up the proper name of it. Maybe our lovely editor can put it down oh, here in I the corner. You, I or I don't oh, even need to do a, that. There's a, oh, we can take the toll roads. In Excellent. New Jersey, yeah, great. <laughs> um, so we're looking at, uh, is an anthracite paint. Okay. The main hide, which is what they call the interior. Sure. Is pillar box red. Okay. And the secondary hide is beluga. 
Which is interesting because it looks like the primary would be the black, but okay. Yeah, I guess the, the <laughs> accent is the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the veneer, of course, is high gloss carbon fiber. Sure, sure, sure. And oh, MSRP. You want to guess? I would guess thir- uh, three hundred eighty thousand. Three ninety five. Three ninety five. All right, getting up toward four hundred there for this one, but. You can't buy W12s for much longer, so you kind of got to pay to play. And if you want a car that's really going to be something special and memorable for many, many years to come, hate to say it, but you might want you might want to start spending the cash because after 2024 model year, is it 2024 model year or just 2024 in 25, general? 25, I think he said 25 is when everything's going uh, yeah. V8 and stuff. So all right, so after next model year you're not gonna be able to get a W12 anymore. So if you want the most exclusive and the coolest Continental, pony up. Now that we're going slow behind this Hyundai, let's try dropping the roof. Yes, let's. I don't have my patented earmuffs, so it might be a little loud. But if, bye the, bye roof. if the Bentley is engineered well enough, then uh, it might be quiet enough in here. For some reason our climate has actually gone into convertible spec. So let's uh, let's do that. And the box truck behind us is a bit cross, so let's bury it. This is what I like to call a tough day at the office. Yeah, it sucks to have to be out here, you know, I'd rather just be uh, home inside in yeah. my uh, home office, but you know, every once in a while, you gotta commute out to the, to the office and get it done, so. Yeah, you gotta go out and see things. I know you'd rather be hearing the ding of your Slack messages going rather than the roar of that W12, but hey, everybody's gotta make sacrifices and That's I appreciate right you doing one. And it's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. You're out here doing the Lord's work. And then lastly, the one that looks best here in shadow, where the W12 began, the Continental GT Coupe. This one, white on white, a little bit of a black and white interior. This was the most fun one to drive. Absolutely well done. And what I think of when I think of Bentley W12 is this right here, the Continental GT Speed. We're just about to get in to the driver's seat here on the culmination, getting back to the original W12 car, the Continental GT Coupe. This of course being the speed model, rocking the W12. Without any further ado, let's enjoy some of the best roads that California has to offer in this car. We're gonna dial our fan speeds down. Oh no, Bro. the Equinox, we were just about ready. We had so much clear road. A 911 just went flying by us before we swapped or, and uh, had really cleared up some way. But take a look at this gorgeous interior, kind of color match to the exterior. It's nice white. And here we go, celebration of the W12. Let's do it. one of them. Still very light steering. Now is there a way to lock this into manual mode? There you go. There we go. We had the opportunity to go through a tunnel earlier and you hear the turbos whooshing away, making this shrill shriek. It really is a unique experience. That's what's really stood out to me about these Bentleys today, driving everything from the Bentayga, Flying Spur, these two Continentals. They're unique, not only just because they're Bentleys, but this powertrain. And so I really hope that 
whatever Bentley ends up doing when it comes to electric vehicles, when it comes to more quote-unquote environmentally friendly powertrains and engines and methods of propelling a car, I really hope they're able to instill this sense of passion and uniqueness and personality into a car because behind the wheel of this, this feels like nothing I've ever driven and it feels like nothing else I've ever had on these roads. I mean, the sounds it's making, the way that there's a little bit of turbo lag and then it whooshes you away with this wall of torque, it truly does create a unique and bespoke driving experience. And I just hope that Bentley is able to still cultivate that without their iconic motor. What do you think? Should we do a little launch? I think we might have to. Just for you know, yep. for the sake of journalistic integrity. Of course, because if we didn't, what you know, what reviewers would we be? Apples. <laughs> oh my. You got a lot more uh, uh, rev limit. Yeah, it really blipped it. That's getting a little rough. Wouldn't want to be in something with rubber band tires over that. It's starting to feel a little bit more like Michigan. And what's so cool about cars like this Continental GT Speed is the fact that we just pulled out of Malibu. We were right in the bougiest of bougie eras. They had $30 shakes on the menu, uh, health food shakes. And we felt like the star of the ball. I mean, we saw ourselves driving past some of these windows and, and went, oh yeah, this car looks absolutely proper. So it really is a car that you can look the, the business in front of any sort of crowd, and then you can take some of your passengers out here, three technically, if you can fit them in the back there, and have an amazing time on these roads. And yeah, this isn't gonna feel like a Lotus out here, but it's doing it, it's hustling, and I almost kind of like how it's a bit of a handful, and it requires a bit of patience, and there is some turbo lag, and the transmission isn't the most responsive, because it makes for a reward when you do get the power and you do get to come out of a corner and feel all this weight hustling around. We've got a tunnel coming up, so we're gonna drop the windows, drop some gears, let this W12 sing. Don't forget those back windows. Of course, the back window. Downshift. a unique experience and again the character of this car I just love it I really really do but what do you all think if you were gonna cop one of the last w12 motors here which would it be would it be the classic one like this the coupe would you be going all flashy like that gold Bentayga we we're in classy like the flying spur or are you putting the top down and catching some rays in the convertible let me know in the comments but all I know is while we've got it enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, everybody. We'll see you next time.